you hear at these times people saying things like, oh, this is such an important year, it's such a big year. And it's like um, when there's an election, oh, this is the most important election for generations. And this election is the most important. The most important. This is the most important. 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 This is the most important election in the history of our country. Well, it's not, and it isn't, but with 2021, that can't be said, because it is. This is a pivotal year, which will, in so many ways, decide the direction of human society for at least a very long time to come. I presented a, a video in the 1990s about my research and work at that time, pointing out that the plan was to create the very society that's been so fast emerging in 2020. And I called it freedom or fascism, the time to choose. And all these years later, as we survey the incoming 2021, can anyone but the absolutely fast asleep question the fact that we are indeed facing that choice this year of freedom or fascism and the fact that it is now big time now not tomorrow not the middle of next week now the time to choose which way we go we're no longer at a point where we can think about it we are looking fascism in the eye and we need to look back and not blink. Of course, there are great numbers of the population who will just do what they're told and insist that everyone else does what they're told. So those of us who can see it and start to realize what we're facing, it's down to us to respond. It's our responsibility to respond. Seeing through the crap Seeing through the lies, the mendacity, is a gift. It's a gift of awareness. But with that gift comes responsibility to do something about what we are becoming in increasing numbers aware of. The world is nothing like we think it is. Not even close. And if we're going to do something about it, we need to face what it is and not convince ourselves it's something different because we don't really want to face it. But once you realize that these major dictators and influencers of the direction of human society and increasingly imposers of the direction of human society are all connected by this web, then suddenly the world starts to make sense in a very different way. At the top of the pyramid, you have the cult, the inner core of the cult, tiny, tiny few people. And then as you come down to the bottom of the pyramid, you basically have the rest of humanity. And the rest of humanity in the Hunger Games Society is dependent upon the cult for survival and thus controlled by the cult. You do what we say or you don't survive. And in between the two in the Hunger Games Society is planned, as I've been saying for all these years, not just a police state, but a police military state, a fusion of the two. And that is there to impose the will of the cult few upon the global population and to stop the global population rebelling against the cult few. Because once you control human perception, you control human behavior. It's that simple. Where does perception come from? It comes from information received. If you control information received, control the media, censor anyone else, you're going to get lots of people to have the perceptions that you want them to have by your control of the information they receive. And from perception comes what? Behavior. And collectively, behavior becomes human society. In the books over the years, every one of them, basically, where I have exposed this agenda, I have also talked 
in detail about the nature of reality and the nature of the true I. And the true I is not your name, it's not your body, it's not your life story, it's not your race, it's not your religion, it's not your sexuality, these bloody labels. The true I is consciousness. You are a unique point of attention within an infinite stream of consciousness. That's the true I. And when this body gives out at the end of its cycle, sooner or later, that is what continues eternally, exploring infinity, infinite. Now, if you come from that self-identity that I am consciousness, eternal, infinite consciousness, a point of awareness, then things that happen in human society take on a different perception. This expanded self-identity, I am all it is, has been and ever can be having a human experience very briefly, gives you a completely different perspective on the world. If you do this, what you know to be right, and uh, these are the consequences. All right, but well, I'm going to do it anyway. And if enough people do it, there are no consequences because there are too many people. This redefinition of self-identity is going to be vital in 2021. And it's happening in more and more people. Because if you perceive yourself to be, in terms of the true I, your labels, your life story, your race, your religion, your sexuality, then you see yourself, by definition, in limited terms. You are identifying yourself with your experiences, because that's what those labels are. They are experiences for the true I, a state of awareness, an eternal, infinite state of awareness. But if you get caught, and this is what society is always trying to do, they want to pull you in to self-identifying with your labels, limitation, I can't, it's not possible. And for those that buy a religion, then you're just a pawn of a God. And you must do what God says. Well, how do I know what God says? I'll tell you, says the man, another man in fancy dress. And that sense of limitation, that sense of little me, that comes from self-identification with experiences as the I, that state of awareness is far, far, far more likely to be intimidated by authority and to acquiesce to its own enslavement. So I would say, look at the big picture. Look at the long game. When you do what you know to be right, you may have challenges in the short term, but events move in the kaleidoscope and it all works out in the end. Do what you know to be right. Have the courage to do that. And yes, there'll be challenges in a world that's insane, but it kind of works out in the end, not despite doing what you know to be right, but because of it. I mean, look at my life. I did long ago what I knew to be right and got enormous ridicule for it and abuse ongoing daily. But now, 30 years later, more and more people are looking at what I'm, what I'm putting out because events have moved my way in terms of what I said would happen is happening. Well, I have come back. Of course, it never went away. They only thought I did. Why? Because you keep doing what you know to be right. It's a feedback loop. And, that and consequences you thought you would have either don't manifest or become a stepping stone to something greater. If people don't have this transformation of self-identity, then 2021 and beyond is going to be very challenging and very frightening and very intimidating. But if the same people have this transformation, I am not David Icke. I am not a man born in Leicester, England in 1952. That's my experience. They're just names for my experience. It's just a vehicle for that experience. I am the infinite awareness having that experience. And when it's over, I'll move on to an infinite series of other experiences. And what that does, it makes the experience in the moment a very different proposition to what it does if you buy the three score year and 10. This is all I am. So the spiritual 
transformation and what we need to do to bring this to an end are one of the same. Because people in that state of identity won't take shit from these psychopaths and morons. Won't, won't happen. They'll stand up and they'll say, not having it. No, I'm not doing it. No. And as the number increases, game over. If you just sit there and take it and hope that it will come to an end, it's not meant to come to an end. So do we stand up now and draw the line and roll it back? Or do we just sit and complain and say, it'll be over eventually? No, no, you'll be over eventually. 2021 is the year that we find out which people want freedom, really want freedom, and which people just talk about it, platitude about it. Because freedom has to be lived. You can't be free just talking about it. You have to live it. And that, that is what is so necessary in 2021. We live freedom. We want freedom? Okay. We live freedom. And we cease to cooperate with anything that seeks to take it away. And there are billions of us, and there's a relative handful of them. The mathematics alone show where the answer lies. What we do in this regard, in this 2021, will indeed decide where humanity goes from here. Because if this cult gets all that it wants in 2021, if people think we've been living fascism in 2020, they ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, people. We're bigger than this. We're more numerous than that which controls us by vast amounts. No more acquiescence. Enough of it. 2021 can be the year that fascism completely take, took over. Or it can be the year when freedom expressed itself. And it can go down in history as the time the tide turned.